Good morning. I'm Lexi. I hope you're doing well. So I'm pretty behind on my reading goal for this month. You could say I'm in a slump. You could say I've been chronically rotting at all hours of the day. I'm really not even sure there's a brain left to fry anymore. But anyways, I have made the decision to beat this slump through force by just reading for 24 hours straight with essentially no breaks. You know, because that's just a very cool, normal thing to want to do. I've seen lots of people do similar things to this on YouTube, and let me tell you, there are some absolute cowards out there who will just stop and start the timer on different days. You know, taking care of themselves and making sure that they get their rest and have good health and don't crater their mental health for no reason for a YouTube video. Just really, frankly, embarrassing rationale like that. I will not be doing those things. I am going to be starting this timer when I'm done talking, and I will be stopping this timer after 24 calendar real world hours have passed unless I myself pass away first which is a possibility I won't spoil anything or if I do I'll warn you and like tell you where to skip ahead to who fucking knows it's a mystery I don't really know what this video is going to be but let's do it the first book that we're going to be reading today is called lessons in chemistry and I'll tell you more about it when I am more sentient than I am right now okay okay it's 8 58 a.m. and we are officially Yay! live. Rule one is don't let your phone die all day. If, if my phone dies, I'm just gonna have to walk into the sea. I have the hiccups right now. This is an inauspicious start. <laughs> oh god. I'm wearing my tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow sweatshirt because by the time that I finish this reading vlog, I will certainly feel the facts that it is tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow from right now. And there's some fun theming and irony there, I think, to be had. So that's the fifth for today. <laughs> all right, stop stalling. Read. You can't see this, but the author is so mother. I love her already. So it's been a little bit over three and a half hours since I started recording and I'm about halfway through the book. I'm on page 200 in case you're curious. So I thought I would give you a little bit of a status update and also tell you what this book is actually about. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling motivated. I'm feeling delusional that this won't actually be that hard. It has been nice to sit down and grind through some books, especially since I've been allergic to the idea of reading recently. So morale on the front lines is high, at least for now. This book so far is a lot of fun. It's about this woman named Elizabeth, who is a scientist in the 1960s that is working basically as the only woman in her lab. And the hook of this book on the blurb is that for some reason she ends up being the star of this big cooking show where she fuses her love for chemistry with her love for food and basically uses her platform to radicalize American women into wanting more for themselves and their lives than social standards at the time, which is a good premise for sure. And I'm 200 pages in now and I am only just getting to the point where that's happening. The first half of this book goes into a lot more detail than I expected on her life before that position as a scientist and a romantic relationship that she has and the birth of her child. All of that setup is given a lot more attention in the actual book than it is in the blurb. And you see very clearly a lot of the experiences that she has with misogyny and discrimination as a scientist during her life. And yeah, I've liked it so far. I enjoy reading about precociously smart kind of nerdy characters. It has like this quirky kind of charming writing style that reminds me a little bit of Gabrielle Zevin, who is one of my favorite authors. Obviously she did Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. But this book more so reminds me of The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery, which is another book by hers that I love in just the way that it's written and its tone that it takes with the story. And what can I say? You know, I'm a simple woman. I love a quirky little Book. And yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes from here. Off I go. I think I'm gonna go downstairs. It's a more productive environment so I don't fall asleep in the middle of this video. Not that I'm tired yet. I'm not, not tired yet. yet. This is my lineup, by the way. We have historical romance, sci-fi, brain-dead romance novel, YA contemporary written in verse, YA fantasy. You'll hear about these books if and when I get to them. I don't want to jinx it and I don't want to commit to anything. Hello, I'm back. It has been seven hours and 49 minutes and I am officially done. Yay! Full disclosure, I did cheat just a little bit, but I have a friend who just moved to Chicago and he called to give me an apartment tour. So like, what am I gonna tell him? No, sorry, I am busy for the next 24 hours putting words into my brain. Obviously not, I picked up. We talked for like 40 minutes. I honestly don't feel that bad because it's not like anybody will be calling me at four in the morning later tonight. But as for this book, let me take out my notes. Overall, I definitely liked this. I found it to be pretty enjoyable. I wanna underline again that this was definitely heavier than I expected it to be, especially for a book with a pink cover and a girl that's just out here looking all sassy. That's weird marketing with this one. There are some parts of the story I did not love. The dialogue definitely stays just very quirky, crazy, scientific all the way through, which is especially true with the kid, Madeline, who again is like four years old during most of this book, but is out here acting like a mature adult and reading The Sound and the Fury. I don't know if this author has ever met a four-year-old in her life. And that's not a big deal for me, but I know that some people find 
find that to be frustrating. So if you need your kids to be written like kids, this is definitely your fair warning on this one. And finally, I also feel like, speaking from somebody who for the record is not religious like at all, the depiction of religion in this book was just very two-dimensional. Like religion is bad and the enemy and anti-science. And I think that having more nuance there actually would have really strengthened the author's message, which based on the events of this book seemed to be a lot more about how institutions and culture and the evil people at the top can and will weaponize whatever they can in support of them being deplorable humans and in the name of creating obstacles to keep the people that they want down down. But the book did not choose to take that route and I wish that it had because I feel like it would have made the rest of the book much stronger. But yeah, despite those caveats, I still did really have a lot of fun with this book. I thought that it was super readable, very girl boss slay science. There's a dog who's kind of anthropomorphized a little bit. Just a dash of magical realism in here with him. And he is just a good ass boy. Far and away, the dog was the best character for me. Probably a four star read for me. All right, up next in the roster is, oh, the text is so small. Ah! Fear. Fear. I'm feeling fear right now. Red Rising by Pierce Brown. This is a sci-fi book. I don't know anything about it. The back of the book really does tell you nothing here. I'll read it for you. Ready? This is all of it. His wife taken, his people enslaved. Driven by a longing for justice and the memory of lost love, Darrow will stop at nothing to bring down his enemies, even if he must become one of them to do so. For the first time, Red will rise. Like, what does that mean, you know? It's probably as vague as they possibly could have been. This is one of my best friends, like, favorite ever series, and I put off reading it for the past two years, which frankly is just embarrassing. For me, I'm nothing if not the worst friend in the galaxy, but we're gonna try to fix that today, okay? Okay, well, let's go. Okay, but get this. I would have lived in peace, but my enemies brought me war. <laughs> what? That's such a bar. <laughs> okay. We're almost at 12 hours. The sun is setting. I was yawning for a little bit. I dare say I was even feeling tired. It was terrifying, but I'm about halfway through this book. This is crazy. It took a little bit for me to get into. It has that high fantasy, nothing makes sense. And there's a bunch of vocabulary that I don't understand kind of thing going on. But when I got into it, oh my God, it's so metal. I love it. Lots of action, very dark. I could tell you what it's about, but then I'd have to kill you kind of type beat. Like I am kind of glad I went in knowing nothing because honestly, even early plot events, I would consider Consider personally to be spoilers. You're not gonna be hearing shit from me on the topic, okay? I'm not gonna tell you anything about what this is about. Other than that, it's so much darker than I expected. It's pretty violent, it's pretty crazy. And um, yep, I feel ready to keep going. One thing though, you're telling me that this kid's 16? What the fuck do you mean? He has a wife? <laughs> Shut up. That makes no sense to me. Make him like 23. What's the actual difference? You know, I'm still gonna think your world is super depressing and gruesome, but I do not in a million years believe that this kid is having this internal monologue and is 16 at the same time. I don't buy it and Pierce Brown, you're ridiculous for even suggesting it, okay? With that said, we carry on. All right, I finished it. We're done. Yay! status update. It's 12.45. This is typically about when I go to bed. I'm so tired. Pride is a sin. <sighs> I'm supposed to last another eight hours. What's gonna happen to me? <laughs> but this book was really good. God, it was so metal. <laughs> So metal. They really went there in this one. I was very into it. I, in fact, still am quite into it. The characters in this book are ruthless. They take no prisoners, dude. They don't mess around. To the doubters out there, let me just say, Red did in fact rise in this book. Red rose so far, man. Out of orbit, okay? Never to be seen again. That's how far Red rose. I know this is not quite as cerebral a review as you got in the last book, but... <laughs> Sorry. I would like to read the rest of the series, but also I like this series at this point, and I don't want to waste a book that I like on the brain that I'm going to have between 1 and 5 a.m. this morning. That would be a fate worse than death for the sequel to this. One thing I'm noticing about this challenge is that I really thought for some reason that I would be able to make it through like six books during this 24 hour period. I feel so humbled by the fact that it's been 16 hours and I've only gotten through two. And to be fair, I probably wasted like an hour and a half to two hours on eating and and or filming and or that FaceTime with my friend where I was just a cheating loser. But still, you know, like I've never really put it to the test. I just kind of thought that I read faster than that. Both of these books were around 400 pages, which is like 50 pages an hour. That's actually kind of fun, I guess. I'm just looking at the stack of like six books that I have in front of me. <laughs> what was I thinking? Oh man. <sighs> I was foolish. I was foolish. And I can see you with I can see you <laughs> against the wall with me. <laughs> oh, God.
two and a half hours ago, I drove to the grocery store solely to get a bag of pretzels. I don't know why I didn't let you guys in on that information when it was happening. I guess I was just kind of embarrassed. I just really needed them in that moment. And now they're here and I don't think I can ever eat a pretzel again. I've had so many of them. But you know, I'm just to move on with my life and just pick up a different book. I don't know what to choose. What do I follow this up with? I feel like this is kind of like Barbenheimer Corp. Wait, why is this also kind of accidentally a sister book to Lessons in Chemistry? I didn't plan this, okay? I'm a woman firmly outside of STEM. I majored in fucking geography. Give me a map, we're golden, all right? I know everything about maps, you can't challenge me. But put me in front of a Bunsen burner and this house is going to burn straight to the ground. And yet here I am with two women in STEM. You know, it's a themed adventure today. We have women in STEM and um, graphic depictions of violence. We have Bunsen burners and cauterized missing limbs. <laughs> But yeah, this is what I'm reading next. This was part of a section of my book stack that I chose because I feel like I could read these books brain dead. Allie Hazelwood just loves writing the same books over and over again. And you know what? I do be eating it up every single time. If you've never read an Allie Hazelwood book before, I can tell you what you need to know. You're gonna have a woman in STEM in some kind of role in which she's experiencing discrimination from her peers within the industry as science is, as we have learned earlier today a very male dominated field. Our leading lady is always very small, very quirky. In some capacity, she ends up interacting with some kind of tall, semi standoffish scientist. Typically arrogant, but with the heart of gold. But his most important trait is that he actually does not believe women to be fundamentally weaker than men and typically wants to help the main character in some way defeat all of the obstacles that are in her path that are preventing her from having a fulfilling academic career. Which is pretty cool, you know, but like the bars in hell. They share some kind of crazy, wacky forced proximity and their relationship evolves from there. And yeah, that's what all of these books are, but slightly different. I'll correct myself in an update if I'm wrong, but let's just say I'm pretty sure that that's how this is gonna go. And thank God, because I'm barely sentient. <laughs> all right, let's do this. This is a fun spin on the Allie Hazelwood science meet cute. Why can't we just pay women? Why can't we just hire women? Why can't we just look upon women as competent contributors to society? Why are things still hard? You're telling me it's been 60 years since Elizabeth's I made a cooking show. Shit's still this bad? That bitch is rolling in her grave. I feel bad for her. <gasps> Crowley and Pereira are no longer on the search committee. I love this woman in her silly fucking books. That's so slay. We're in the last six hours. I'm so tired. Why did I do this? To what end? Book's really good though. Correction to my description of all Allie Hazelwood books. Elsie is of medium height and Jack only appears to be arrogant. I don't think he actually is. Other than that, I was on the money. I think if I were reading anything else right now, I would be a pile of mush on my living room carpet. But this this book, we stand a hope of getting through her. And then I'll be on the home stretch. And no one can stop me at that point. It's never been done. Nobody's strong enough. With that said, I have reached a period of low morale. For this occasion, I've prepared myself a juice and I will now go and procure the juice. I have procured the juice. It's aloe juice, which I've never had before, but I really like cold pressed juice. If this is bad, I'm just gonna start crying. Oh God, why is this so hard to open? <laughs> Look at this! Do you see this? Did you see this? Oh. This is weird. This does not taste how I thought it would taste at all. Like, it's hard to describe, but it honestly doesn't even taste like a fruit or a vegetable or or anything that I've ever had in a juice before. I don't know if I- I can't tell if I like it or not. Uncertainty. I don't like that. That's not what I wanted from this experience. Okay, I need to keep grinding. I'm grinding so hard. Hour 20 on the front lines. I'm trying to think about what I'm learning about myself from this experience. You know, like figuring out what I can take with me for my future. And mostly what's coming to mind is that I'm an idiot. Don't do this. Just make better choices than me. All right, back to my goofy little romance book. Very exciting times. It's currently 6, 10 a.m. The sun is rising. The birds are chirping a song of deep sorrow and regret. I did finish her, she is done. Yay!
it's what I expected it to be. I don't have really anything else other to say. I thought it was a great time. I love Allie. Moving on, I have not a very long left, like two hours, two and a half, almost three hours. Wow, that got more depressing the more I realized that I was wrong. Nobody prepared me strategically for this situation. I thought I would read faster and not have to deal with this because I don't think I have enough time to get through a book that's over 300 pages. And even then, I don't know, that feels sus to me. That feels like too short of a period of time. But the thing is, I did bring with me downstairs a 300 page historical romance book. Now, I've never read a historical romance before. I did watch the first two seasons to Bridgerton. Season one, pretty problematic. Season two, a lot of fun. Yay! But in general, with like Regency era stuff, I just find it hard to forget that women did not have rights in these books. I feel like I spent too much of my time in high school learning about dowries. I feel like we forget that women only started being able to vote in like the 1920s. But I'm gonna try with this one. Actually, if I read this, I might die. No, don't do it. Yes, let's do it. No, yes. I feel like I just need to accept that no book is going to feel like the right decision when you've been awake for almost 22 hours and you've just shoved 1200 pages into your brain. I just feel like that's a truth that's on par with the blue of the sky outside of my living room window right now. I would love, by the way, to give you guys a scene change. I think that that would be so fun. It'd be so interesting and cool. But if I enter my bedroom, it's over for me and that would be your conscience, okay, for wanting more than you have right now. So just be thankful that I can still be reading in this couch in my current state. Affirmations. I am brave. I am smart. I am literate. I can read. Not all of my ancestors could read. Maybe these women couldn't read in these books, but I can read and therefore it is my duty to read whenever I can. Oh, realizing you probably want my star ratings for the two books I've read recently. I did not give them because my brain is leaking out of my ears, but probably Red Rising is like a four or five. I thought that book banged. Love theoretically, three, five to four, probably a four. There's a tear falling from my face right now. What is going on? Do you guys see this? I think that my body is starting to break down. <laughs> I'm not sad. I'm just trying to talk about my star rating. I was never in love. Did you guys hear about that Owl City shit? What do you think he was thinking with that? What do you think that Taylor thought when her PR team told her about that? I just want to know so badly what thoughts were going through her head. The silence was so loud. <laughs> I feel so mysterious right now. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. You want to read with me? Oh my god. Wow, that's so sweet of you. You know I don't read with just any girls. Through doing this, if nothing else, I feel like I've learned that women are stronger than the troops. I can't even pretend to be sentient right now. Every logical thought has left my body. They are not here anymore. They will not be visiting you. I'm just taking a breather. Okay. It is currently nine o'clock in the morning the next day. I made it about halfway through this book. I'm realizing now that I don't think I ever told you what this was about, keeping it so brief. These five sisters, their parents die and they have no money and they inherit like all of the debt from their parents. And the oldest sister is like, well, gotta marry rich because you know, it's the 1800s and what else is she to do? So she runs off to London and starts kind of gaslight like gatekeep girl bossing this young idiot who has absolutely no idea that he's being manipulated into a fake marriage for his money. His older brother comes to town and catches on and is determined to put a stop to it. Maybe this is heretical to say, but it's kind of like Bridgerton fan fiction. I don't know if this genre is for me. It's really easy to read, but who knows? I still have half of the book left. Um, if I were a better person, I would like stay an extra hour and finish it, but I'm not. I'm gonna go to bed. Overall, I was only able to get through like three and a half books, which was less than I expected by a lot. An embarrassing quota, for sure. Overall, it was like 1300 or so pages. That feels not that bad. I can see now why other YouTubers don't actually pull the all-nighter because I'm miserable right now. I hated doing this in college. I don't know why I thought this was a good idea. You know, I don't know how people do it. I've watched videos where people are still articulate after not sleeping or they have brain cells to spare you know they're still intelligent they're still clever they're still sharp i'm none of those things i do not claim them you've really watched me devolve today into a base state but i am still grateful to have had the time to make a dance on my tbr for the month and also to have read some pretty good books this last one which is kind of mid aside um red rising lessons in chemistry love theoretically all fun all a good time all all good books to carry me through this this battle with you anyways we went through a lot together today, but you know what? Mission success. I made it, okay? No one can tell me that I can't do it. No one can tell me I'm not strong, but thank you for tuning in. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and that's it. Nothing else. Bye.